All right, so today we're dealing with weak acids, calculations involving weak acids. We're not looking at strong acids anymore. All right, today is only weak acids. We did strong acids last week, so we're looking at weak acids this week. They are entirely different in the way they behave. They're entirely different in their calculations, so we have to look at them from a whole different perspective. So what makes an acid weak? I ask students this on tests all the time. You know, one's dangerous and one's safe. Is that the answer? No, okay? What makes an acid weak? It's the extent that it dissociates, right? A weak acid is reactive favorite. Equilibrium lies over here. Ka is less than one. Strong acids are product favored. Ka is greater than one. So we don't make an ice table for strong acids. We do make an ice table for weak acids. So we're going to be doing, that's a lie, there are not two types of calculations. We're going to be doing like four types of calculations. But these are the two we're going to start with. Calculating the pH from Ka, and then calculating the Ka from pH, and then we're going to do some percent dissociation calculations as well. All right, so in your textbook, if you ever need a Ka value, like when you're doing your homework, you've got a homework set due Friday night, if you ever need a Ka value, number one, you can just search it on the internet, but at the back of your textbook in the appendices, there's a, a table called Ka values for weak acids. It's called dissociation constants for weak acids or something like that. It begins on page like A8 or A10 or something like that. It's in the appendices in the back of your book. Okay, so when you're doing your homework this due Friday night, if you have a question where you need a Ka value and it isn't given in the problem, you can look it up in the back of your book. You can also just search it on the internet. If you're doing a diprotic acid, you're just using the first Ka, unless the problem specifies otherwise. So let's do this one together. Calculate the pH of a 0.3 molar acetic acid solution. Now on a test, FYI, on a test, if you need a Ka value, I'm gonna give you a reference page with Ka values. I'm not gonna make you memorize Ka's. That's just an incredible waste of your brain. Now if this were a strong acid, if I said 0.3 molar hydrochloric acid, you'd just say negative log of 0.3 and you'd be done. But this isn't a strong acid, right? Acetic acid's a weak acid. So that means it's reactive vapor, which means we have to make an ice table. Everybody's favorite thing to do, right? So we need to write our dissociation equation, number one. Right? This is the formula for acetic acid. You also could have written it as CH3CO2H. It's the same thing. If you write as CH3CO2H, that's the same thing. Either one. All right, there's our dissociation reaction. We're going to get um, the hydronium ion and acetate ion. Right, And Ka is given. Ka is given. So we're going to make our ice table. We're going to make an ice table. Why are we making an ice table? Because this is a weak acid, right? Which means the equilibrium is over here. And it's very, very, very much over here. So we've got to do an ice table. So let's talk about how we set up this ice table. The problem says it was a 0.3 molar solution, so that's why the I value is 0.3, right? And because this is the initial concentration, that means this is zero and this is zero, right? This is gonna go down by some quantity X, and we're able to use the 5% approximation here because Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, right? This is very reactive favor. So X is going to be a really small number, right? So we're allowed to use the 5% approximation here. Does everyone see why that's allowed? Just like every other ice table we've done so far, if it's reactive favored, we can make the 5% approximation. And we're 99 times out of 100 never going to have to go back and do it the long way. So this will go up by X, this will go up by X. So far, it's nothing new, right? The only thing new, quote unquote, is the fact that this is an acid and we know it's an acid as opposed to any other equilibrium problem. Is everyone with me on how we set up the ice table? Everybody make sense to everybody? Okay, so now we're gonna solve for X. Right? So our Ka expression would be hydronium times acetate divided by Acetic acid, we're ignoring water, it's a liquid, right? So now we're just plugging in all our values. So my Ka goes in right here, right? X goes in right here, X goes in right here, 0 0.3 is going in right here. So now we just do a little bit of algebra, and we get a value, X squared is equal to 5.4 times 10 to the negative 6. How do I get X? Take the square root. 
right? So x is 2.3 times 10 to the negative third. Now that's x. Am I done? Is that what the pH is? No, that's not the pH, right? What am I going to do to get the pH? Take the negative log, right? Because if this is x, this goes in right here. So I plug x back in. And what's the definition of pH? It's just negative log of H3O plus. Now we follow our sig fig rules. Number of total sig figs here equals number of decimal places here. So 2.64. That's why it's 2.64 and not 2.6. Because remember, those sig fig rules for logarithms are different than the sig fig rules for multiplying and dividing. And here's why we can make the 5% approximation, right? Because we were only having two sig figs in our molar volumes here. When we plug x back in, look, x didn't change within sig figs. So 5% approximation was fine. We don't even have to go back and double check it. Does everybody understand how we did this? This is literally just taking what we've done for the past two weeks one step further. We're just taking a regular old reactive favored ice table and now we're taking the, the negative log of one of the values. And that's it. Make sense? Make sense? All right, so, <clears throat> so you do this one. So I'm gonna give you the Ka value. Just a reminder, you'll get that to you on a reference page. What's the pH of a five molar nitrous acid solution? And there's its Ka. Let's see how we did on this one. So just a reminder that I will give you KAs, right? So it'll be on a reference page. So the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out what's the formula for nitrous acid, right? If this were nitric acid, would we need an ice table? No, nitric acid's a strong acid, right? So we just take negative log of the initial concentration to be done. But nitrous acid is weak acid. And we could tell that just by looking at its Ka, right? So we write our dissociation equation. And then we're gonna make an ice table. The problem told us it was five molar initially, so we're gonna use the 5% approximation because Ka is way less than one, right? So now we just do some arithmetic, right? Ka is equal to H3O plus times nitrite divided by nitrous acid. So now I plug in my Ka and I plug in X and I plug in X and I plug in five and I do some math, and I got 4.74 times 10 to the negative second. Am I done? Is that where I stop? Nope. Right, what do I do? I plug x back into my ice table, and then what? Take the negative log, right? So the pH is gonna be the negative log of that. So 1.32. Let's see, three sig figs. So I should have three decimal places there, shouldn't I? I need to carry out one more decimal place. Because I had three total sig figs, so I'd actually need one more decimal place there. So what would that be? 4.74 log 1.324. There we go. Okay, try this one. And just for fun, before we move on to something else, we want to make sure we're good at this before we move on. This time I want the pH and the pOH. See if you can remember how to get pOH from last week. What's the pH and what's the pOH of a 0.1 molar hypochlorous acid solution? And we're at 25 degrees Celsius. And the Ka at that temperature is 2.9 times 10 to the negative 8. So see if you can remember how to calculate pOH as well. So we want to know pH and pOH this time, so we're just going to take what we did one step further. That's all we're doing. So we're still setting up our ice table exact same way. We're still using the 5% approximation. Right? We're still plugging everything in, solving for x, and we're plugging x back into our table. So I got a pH of 4.27, right? Two total sig figs means two decimal places. And then to convert pH to pOH, it's just subtraction from 14. So 9.73, so the pH is 4.27, pOH is 9.73. Is 4.27 a reasonable pH for a weak acid? 
Yes, it is, right? Strong acids, you'd expect to be down near zero, right? But these are not fully dissociated, right? Equilibrium is not over here, it's over here. So this is a reasonable pH. Yes. Do we agree? Did you get it right? You made a mistake, you see you made it. All right, let's go the other direction. Now I'm gonna give you pH and you calculate Ka. So we're going the other way. So the pH of a 0.1 molar formic acid, and formic acid is not something you're required to memorize because you don't need to know formate. So formic acid has this formula, and you determine that its pH is 2.38. And I wanna know what's Ka for formic acid. So we know the pH, it's 2.38, we know the molarity, right? You gotta know both of those things, otherwise you can't solve this kind of problem. So step one is still gonna be write a dissociation equation, right? That's always gonna be step one. No matter what acid you're dealing with, step one needs to always be write dissociation, right? So any weak acid, or any strong acid either, any acid with water produces hydronium ion plus the acetate, right, plus the anion, here it's the formate ion, and this would be our Ka expression. And we're still gonna set up an ice table. But this time, here's the difference. We are not using the 5% approximation. Do not use the 5% approximation on this kind of problem. And here's why. You don't need it. You don't need to approximate x because you know x's value exactly. How am I gonna get x this time? Well, x is, comes from H3O plus, right? And how can I get H3O plus if I know pH? Right, the problem told us the pH. So how do I turn a pH into hydronium ion concentration? H3O plus is just 10 to the negative pH. Do you see why we don't need to solve the ice table the same way we've done in the past? Because X is H3O plus, and it's also formate. But H3O plus can be obtained from the pH. If the pH is 2.38, tan to the negative pH would give me H3O plus, which is X. So I don't use the 5% approximation because technically I'm not solving this ice table the same way that I solved my previous one. Okay, I know the exact value of X, so I don't need to approximate. Does everybody see how we got X? It comes directly from the pH. The problem told us what the pH is, how do I turn a pH into a hydronium ion concentration? It's just 10 to the negative pH. So in my calculator, I just say 10 to the negative 2.38, and I get a value for X, which I then plug into all of these. No approximating, okay? Because I'm calculating Ka, and I want to be as exact as possible. I don't want to make any approximations, right? I want my Ka value to be as precise as possible, so I don't want to guess. I don't want to approximate here. I want to put the exact value. So now I plug in X here, here, and here. Do I have everything I need to solve for Ka now? Yeah, I do, because Ka is just this times this divided by this, right? So I plug in my values. Ka is hydronium times formate divided by formic acid, and I get my final answer. Is that a reasonable Ka for a weak acid? Or times 10 to the negative fourth, is that a reasonable Ka for weak acid? Yes, if you came up with 1.84 times 10 to the 10th, positive 10th, would that be a reasonable Ka for a weak acid? No, you need to go back and check your math, okay? So always use your answer as a, hmm, is this reasonable kind of thing. If your answer comes out to be negative exponent, then it's probably reasonable. If you come out with positive two as your exponent, <clears throat> That's not reasonable, right? Did you see how this one worked? This one, I don't know, some students think these are easier. I think they're probably about equal in difficulty. But you don't have to solve the ice table, technically. Technically, you're not solving the ice table because what you're doing is you're using the pH to get H3O plus, and then the ice table just kind of guides you to solving Ka. Does this make sense? You ready to try one for yourself? 
Okay, in the lab, you find the pH of a 1.11 molar solution of an unknown acid. Let's just call it HX. And we don't care what its identity is, it's just some unknown weak acid. And you determine that its pH is 4.56. Calculate the Ka for this acid. This could be a way that you would identify it, right? Because each acid's gonna have its own Ka. So if you figure out the, I, the Ka, you can break out your Ka table and then identify your acid. So try this one. So this is a way that you could identify an acid, because if you can calculate its Ka, each acid's gonna have a unique Ka, and assuming that you measured the pH correctly, um, you could then identify your acid. So here we're just using HX, X is any unknown acid, we don't really care. We're not using the 5% approximation because it's not necessary, right? You know the exact value of X. So you can't approximate something when you know its exact value. Remember, the more approximation here, the, the less accurate your Ka value is gonna be anyway. So we don't wanna make an approximation here, we wanna use the exact value. So how are we going to get X? We're not solving this ice table in the traditional quote unquote way. How are we gonna get X here? We can't use Ka to get X because Ka is what we're solving for. So how are we gonna get X? Right, we know the pH. Problem told me that the pH was 4.56, so that means that hydronium ion concentration must be 10 to the negative pH, right? So that's both the concentration of hydronium ion and whatever my anion is. And now I'm gonna plug that back into my ice table. Again, we're gonna plug in the exact value. Now, this is not gonna change the value of um, the concentration, because this is times 10 to the negative fifth, so within sig figs, that value doesn't change. So if you had made the approximation, it really wouldn't have hurt you here. Right, so we plug in our values and we're off to the races. Is that a reasonable Ka for a weak acid? Yes, it is. All right, now let's talk about percent dissociation. We're gonna change gears a little bit. This isn't any more difficult, it's just different, okay? So in the first two types of problems, we calculated pH from Ka, or Ka from pH. Now let's talk about percent dissociation. So what do we know about weak acids? Do they dissociate fully? Are they product favored or reactant favored? They're reactant favored, right? And weak acids don't fully dissociate. In other words, the equilibrium lies on this side, right? So percent dissociation is a way of quantifying how much the equilibrium lies over here. So Ka is also the, the same measure of the same thing, right? Because Ka is telling you, hey, look, the equilibrium's staying over here, right? Percent dissociation is just telling you the same thing in different words. That's all it's doing. So percent dissociated is amount dissociated over the initial times 100. And our units here are going to be percent. So basically, percent dissociation is just um, showing us the same stuff that Ka would tell us, too. They should go hand in hand. Right, if you have a low Ka, you should have a low percent dissociation. And if you have a high Ka, you should have a high percent dissociation. Right, they should go together. So this is basically just confirming what Ka already tells us. So let's do this one together. Calculate the percent dissociation of acetic acid, and there's its Ka, in a one molar solution. So this is basically taking the same thing that we've been doing since class started, one step further, right? We took it one step further to calculate pH. We're gonna take it one step a different direction to calculate percent dissociation. So we're still gonna solve an ice table. So step one, as in any weak acid calculation, needs to be to write your dissociation equation, right? Any dissociation equation should have the same generic format. Where you've got your acid in water, hydronium in anion, right? Every weak acid, every strong acid is going to follow the same generic formula. And now we're going to make our ice table. Okay. So, same as before, we're using the 5% approximation here because Ka is so small. Right. Can you see these letters okay? Is that too dark? We're going to make them contrast a different color. It's fine. We're beautiful. All right. So, we're making the 5% approximation because this is a weak acid, right? And that'll make our math 100% easier because we don't have to deal with the quadratic equation. 
So we write our Ka expression. We plug in, we plug in, we plug in. We get 4.2 times 10 to the negative third. Everyone's with me on how we solve for x, right? I feel like we've done it enough times that probably we're blue in the face. That's good. So we plug x in. Now, if I had asked you for pH, you would have just taken the negative log of this, right? But I didn't ask for pH, I asked for percent dissociation. So percent dissociation is the amount dissociated over the initial concentration. So it's the amount dissociated over the initial concentration, okay? How much did it dissociate at equilibrium out of the amount that I began with? So I began with one molar, and at equilibrium, only 4.2 times 10 to the negative third molar had actually dissociated. Okay, so this is 0.42%. Is that a reasonable percent dissociation for a weak acid? Yes, small numbers are reasonable. If we were doing this for nitric acid, it'd be 100%. We wouldn't even bothered with the ice table, right? Because strong acids fully dissociate. They are 100% dissociated. That's why we don't waste our time with ice tables for strong acids, right? Because this value is 100. But this is not a strong acid, this is a weak acid. So this is telling me, out of that initial one molar solution, only 4.2 times 10 to the negative third actually dissociated. And that's basically confirming my Ka. Okay, percent dissociation should go along with my Ka. Ka is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. That's a reasonable percent dissociation. And my initial concentration was one molar. It's not like I started with a 50 molar solution. Start with a low concentration, I'd get a low percent dissociation. Do we see how to do this one? Make sense? You ready to do one for yourself? Okay, what's the percent dissociation of acetic acid? Same Ka, but now the initial concentration is 0.2 molar. So, same acid, different initial concentration. See if you can solve that one. All right, let's see what we got here. So, still acetic acid, still got the same Ka. The only thing different is the initial concentration. So, I'm making the 5% approximation to solve for x, and I got x is 1.9 times 10 to the negative third. And so that gave me a Ka, I mean a percent dissociation of 0.95. Do we agree? Did you get the same value? 0.95%. Does everybody understand how to do percent dissociation problems? Where are these numbers coming from? That's the initial amount. That's the equilibrium amount, right? So of that initial 0.2 molar, 1.9 times 10 to the negative third molar actually dissociated. And that's what percent dissociation is telling me. Now we've got one more type of problem to solve. As I told you, we're solving four main problems today. So I've got one more to look at, and it's just percent dissociation 2.0. So now we're gonna go backwards. We have a two molar solution and it's some mystery acid, right? We wanna identify it. We don't know what its Ka is. Uh, we're gonna find out. We know, now in the previous problems where we calculated Ka, we had a pH, right? We used pH to calculate Ka. There's another way you could calculate Ka, and you can do it from percent dissociation. So let's pretend that you determine in the lab that it's 9.1% dissociated at equilibrium. So I wanna know what's Ka, and how would I turn the Ka into a pKa? What does that P mean? Negative log, right. Anytime you meet, see little P, right, it means negative log. So POH would be negative log of OH minus, pKa would be negative log of Ka, okay? And I said, this was something you'll see a lot in organic chemistry. A lot, a lot, a lot. So, this is the second way we could calculate an equilibrium constant for a weak acid. We could calculate it using pH. We could also calculate it using percent dissociation. So, this method isn't any more difficult, just another way of doing it. So, first thing we got to do is we got to write our equilibrium expression. That's always step one. That should always be the first thing that jumps to your brain. Okay? HX, we don't know what its identity is, is in equilibrium with hydronium ion and whatever the anion is. And we know the definition of percent dissociation, right? It's the amount dissociated over the amount we began with. 
There should be a times 100 right here. I ran out of room. Right, because that's how that's calculated, is times 100. Now, if this is 9.1% dissociated, that's the value that's going in right here, right? And we know how much we began with initially. We could then solve for x. And then we could, if we know this value, we know this value. And then we get subtracted and get that value. All right, so got some random errors. Just bear with me, right? Percent dissociation is the amount of dissociated over the initial amount. All right, so where are my errors? There we go. So percent dissociation is the amount of dissociated over the amount I had initially, right? Now, here's the one thing you've got to do. Make a big star in your notes. You've got to convert this percent back to a decimal because this is being multiplied times 100, right? You got to get rid of that times 100 component. So turn it back into a decimal because if you don't, your answer is going to be off by a couple orders of magnitude, right? So if it's 9.1% dissociated, that value as a decimal is 0.091, right? Because this is times 100. This quantity times 100 is how we got percent dissociation. So how do you get rid of times 100? You divide by 100. Okay, so don't forget to do that. So the problem told me it was 9.1% dissociated, dissociated. So that value as a decimal. This is from the problem. The problem told me the initial concentration. So now I'm just solving for x. So x is this times this. That's how I got that. And that is H3O plus. Well, H3O plus is also this value and this value are the same, right? When you make your ice table, this is x and this is x. Yes? Do we agree? So now we've got a value of x, which we can then plug into a Ka expression. First of all, look at this and make sure that it makes sense. Are you with me? Everyone with me? Okay. So it's the same values that I just showed you. 0.91 goes right there. This is from the problem. Now we just multiply those two together and get x. This value, it goes there, it goes there. Right? Those two are the same number. And now we need to subtract, right? Hx, if you think about it from an ice table perspective, how would you get the equilibrium value? You'd subtract x, because this would be 0.2 minus x, 0.2 minus x. Right? So that's why it's 0.182 here. You see why it's 0.182 here? Because x is 1.8 times 10 to the negative second. I didn't draw out an ice table, but if you were to, right, it would be 0.2 minus x, 0.2 minus x. So that's where this value goes from. Okay? And then we have our k. Does this make sense? I don't think it's any harder. I don't think you technically even need to write an ice table. I mean, you can if it helps guide you through the steps, but it's really not all that necessary. Um, because if you know, okay, you solve for x, and that's this value, and I just know because I've done this 100 times now that this is going to have to be subtracted from here, then you can just kind of go straight from here to here without an ice table. Now, if you want to make an ice table, by all means do it. Okay, if making the ice table keeps you organized and keeps you on track, then please make the ice table. But I think just by the fact that we've done this a hundred times now, you can probably walk yourself through going from here to X to here. But if not, if you want to make the ice table, please do it. No problem. I don't have any problem if you make it. It's not going to hurt you to make the ice table. It's just going to be extra writing. Is that a reasonable KA for a weak acid? Is that a reasonable KA? Yep. And then how would I get the pKa? Make the negative log. Right. So 2.74. Questions on how we did this type of percent dissociation. Using percent dissociation to calculate Ka. So that was the last one. We've got one for you to try. You don't have to use Appendix C. Let's just pretend you've got a weak acid, Hx. It's 0.35 molar. You determine that it's 1.32% dissociated at equilibrium. What's Ka and pKa? 
And then if you've got your book, you could look it up in your appendix, figure out uh, what its identity is. All right, let's go over this last problem. So we know that it is a weak acid and we know that it is 1.32% dissociated and we know its initial concentration. So we're going to use the percent dissociation equation to solve for x, right? This value is going to be the same as this value and then we subtract it out from this value get that. I mean, excuse me, to get the equilibrium value, excuse me. So I got x equals 4.62 times 10 to the negative third. Did you? Yes. Now, don't forget to divide by 100, right? Because it's a percent, we need to convert it back to a decimal. And now our Ka expression, we have to subtract x from here because this is the initial value, but we want the equilibrium value here, right? If we were making an ice table, it will be 0.35 minus x, 0.35 minus x, right? So we need to subtract x to get this value right here. It's not gonna make a huge difference in terms of your sig figs though, because I'm assuming that within sig figs, if you forgot to do that, it's probably not gonna make a major difference in your final answer. But do we agree on the Ka? And then how would I get pKa? Take the negative log, right? So some possible identities. It could be succinic acid, 6.2 times to the negative fifth. That would be within lab error, depending on your, your equipment, what you're using. So that's where we're going to stop for today. Uh, if you have questions about anything, welcome to come talk about those. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. Have